I did like it. You kept your cool all the way through the campaign, but when you got some pretty um, ridiculous <laughs> questions from the media on Saturday night, you let them know about it. Watch this. Where's the about getting results, mm. getting people reduced and suicide and instead of this nonsense that you people carry on with? It's about time. We had a vote tonight that said Australians want to get things done. Please tell us, after this result now, you're going to keep that fire in your belly, uh, about audits, about finding out where the money that leaves Canberra in its billions but never gets to the ground, where that money goes. That you'll go after land councils who don't let Aboriginal people to own land, to build a business, to try and get ahead. This is going to be the next campaign, I hope, for you, Warren. Please tell me that's true. That is true, and it all, also about the attack on free speech. Yeah, this bill that's been put forward by the, the federal government, it's, it's the big, second biggest go that a Labor government has uh, uh, attacked free speech in this country. And, and we've got to fight against that. This, this truth-telling, this, this, uh, this disinformation and misinformation, you know... The real facts are, and we got we seen this in the polling, was that when people read the the pamphlet that was put out by the AEC, the vote for the Yes mm -hmm. campaign went down, and that went down because they started to see the dangers. They started to see this thing, which was but was a magic wand. No one was prepared to tell them how. Say, come out and give us the details and tell us how it was going to fix everything. Uh, they just kept on saying, "Oh no, no." Uh, you know, child molestation, uh, just it'll be fixed by the, by the voice. This, uh, you know, crime in Aboriginal communities will be fixed by the voice. Uh, unemployment will be fixed by the voice. And none of it, none of it. You know, how, how do you uh, how do you actually get an advisory? Committee and and uh, that can be re uh, its advice can be rejected. This is their words, not mine. Can be rejected mm. by the government, uh, and and that's what we're doing now. Now they want to put it in the constitution. Look, we had the vote. We need to move on. We need to bring people back together and focus on the real issues. And this is what I'm I'm going to be out there doing every day: is get back to the real issues about you know nine year old kids who have been committing suicide in in, in Aboriginal communities. You know, when I was nine years old, all I wanted to do was kick a footy around with my brothers and my mates, you know, and, and looking forward to a good life. You know, they're looking mm. at their future and they can't see nothing. And so they commit suicide. For God's sake, it's about time the, the media woke up and started asking the real questions to, of governments at state, territory and federal mm. level to do their job. I want to read out a letter that I know you've only got in the last uh, couple of hours. It's, it's an email. Um, really moving. And this is from a bloke, and I'll, I'll read out what he said. He says, I, I've never done anything political in my life, but I was so disgusted by the guilt politics that have infected this country that I stood for 11 hours out the front of my polling booth alone in Victoria. And when I finally got home and took off my shoes and sat down, it was with a sense of shame that my one day must pale into insignificance to what you and just enterprise and your families must have had to endure over this period. My children, he says, have never seen me cry, but I was moved to tears when I saw your outburst at the media because I feel the same way too. I've really felt more humbled than now and am proud to have done my tiny part in this small victory for common sense and logic. Now, I've left the bloke's name out because... Uh, he, he took on all the yes people at his polling booth. He was the only no person <laughs> handing out. I might add that polling booth went 65%, I think, uh, the way of no. So he's a pretty powerful yeah. uh, individual. <laughs> but, I mean, I read that and had tears in my eyes too, Warren. Uh, look, the Australian people, you know, I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud uh, of people like him. You know, I went around the polling booths and the pre-polling uh, in in Western Australia, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland, and and we we, we were struggling, and uh, we had didn't have the money and things like that, and we had 
some booths we couldn't even man. And yet those booths still got a, a no vote. And, and he... I, I'm just so proud of him. He, he is an amazing, amazing human being. And, and, and I met heaps of them out there who were, who were being abused on the polling boots, being attacked. I, you know, I, I've always been polite and, and to volunteers, no matter what political party they're in, no matter what, because d democracy works when people come out and, and volunteer and, and help, help the process, help the candidates and all that. And so I always put my hand out to shake the hand. And, and for the first time in my life, and I've been doing this for 30 years, uh, people refused to shake my hand. Uh, they gave me dirty looks. Wow. You know, but I've I, I, I got I to gotta say that not all people were like that. There were some beautiful people who come up and gave me a cuddle from the Yes campaign, and I and, and I even got photos with them. Uh, it is, uh, you know, this, this minority of people who, who are whinging now because they mm. can't accept the democratic process. Well, keep it up. You've got, uh, you've got your campaign mojo back now. We'll see what happens next. Free speech is going. Uh, Warren Mundine's <laughs> coming out to protect you and more. Thank you for your time, mate. Well done. A magnificent campaign from you too.